Hello everybody, welcome to the CSSI YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna be looking at a few design and technique things that you can do in order to design your own rocket nozzles. The experiments used with these nozzles can be found at CSSI.space. Um, and I actually have my nozzles here around. Let me pull them up. So the nozzle experiments with these nozzles, I only have two right here, uh, can be found at CSSI.space. We've changed a lot of parts of the website. We've added new experiments, especially one on regression rates. Uh, which wasn't on the website before. So definitely go check that out in the description below. So in this video, we'll also be looking at a few equations that can be used to calculate the optimal expansion uh, area ratio and throat and uh, exit cross-sectional areas for your nozzles. These equations all consider the case of choked flow, i.e. the exhaust reach supersonic velocities at the throat to the point that further shrinking the throat cross-sectional area prevents any more exhaust from exiting the nozzle, which can be seen in my previous video. This is interesting because if you actually look at the equations that I'm about to show, uh, you can see that it's just a mesh of more isotropic variables. Um, and in this special scenario where the Mach number is actually equal to one, which is also why uh, the equations are much simpler than they would have been if the Mach number was not one. So the way we did it in CSSI was to attach a pressure valve right beside the combustion chamber to measure the chamber pressure. We did this during the preliminary testing of the nozzle experiment alongside measuring the local speed of sound. This allows us to find the P1 term, uh, which you'll see in the equations. P2 is the pressure at the exit cross-sectional area of the nozzle which can be set based on your mission's goals. For example, as mentioned in the previous video, if you wanted to create an efficient nozzle at atmospheric pressure at sea level, you would set the exit pressure to equal the ambient air pressure, which gives you the highest specific impulse. In fact, as a rule of thumb, you always want the exit pressure of the nozzle to equal the ambient air pressure of wherever you're at, either whether that's in at sea level or in the vacuum of space. However, if you are designing a first stage rocket, your rocket will be in the atmosphere before it goes into the vacuum of space. As a result, you cannot really set an efficient ambient air pressure as the ambient air pressure is changing during the entire flight. And unless your nozzle can somehow curve to the changing ambient air pressure, such as NASA's RS-25, uh, you will have to do some much more complicated calculations including the use of multivariable calculus to find the optimal, the optimal trade-off between the exit area, the exit pressure, and the changing ambient air pressure, which I have linked down below if you're interested. In general, you want to set the exit pressure roughly to 50, around 90 kilopascals, as the nozzle will incrementally get more efficient the higher it rises up. And you also remove the risk of any flow separation that could happen early on in the process. But this is a general guideline, so make sure you do your calculations. Finally, you want to find the value of gamma, which is simply just a value that describes the specific heat capacity of a fuel. This is very simple to find. I suggest you just do a quick Google search on your fuel. For example, we were using paraffin wax, so our value of gamma was approximately uh, 1.26. Most gases, it's around 1.4, uh, but make sure you search it up and do your research. Regardless, the expansion ratio can be calculated with the following equation. Now, using that value of the expansion ratio, you can calculate the throat area uh, using this equation, which if you look closely, you can actually see is just a manipulation of the classical uh, rocket thrust equation. Then by using the definition of the expansion ratio, uh, you can find the uh, cross-sectional exit area using this equation. Now that you have your values for both your throat cross-sectional area and your exit cross-sectional area, hop onto Fusion 360 uh, and start designing. If you're designing a conical nozzle, as I mentioned before, I would suggest you use a 15 degree half angle. This relates to an efficiency of roughly 98%. You simply just make a line and then perform a volume of revolution across the x-axis. It's very simple. However, you can get even higher efficiencies uh, using a bell nozzle. At CSSI, we designed five co-nozzles, each set at different exit pressures from 30 kilopascals to 160 kilopascals. The purpose of this was to validate the literature that suggested that the most efficient nozzles are produced at an exit pressure that equals the ambient air pressure. And to no surprise, that's the results we ended up getting. So if you are looking to design a bell nozzle, we did not do it here, uh, just because of how much more expensive it actually would have been to CNC manufacture. However, I've linked down a video uh, about a guy who actually did it on Fusion 360, uh, so you can check that out in the description below. Now to manufacture the nozzle, I would suggest using any standard steel manufacturing company uh, that does CNC manufacturing. We first tried to do it at our local machine shop ourselves. That didn't really end up working, <laughs> so instead we worked with uh, Xometry, which 
uh, Goddard nozzles uh, manufactured relatively fast and at a decent low cost. Again, this is steel uh, 1018 um, and it's CNC manufactured. And one more thing to note, uh, make sure you add multiple threads as you can actually see on the nozzle. Uh, and that's just to connect it to the combustion chamber. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As I mentioned before, please make sure to check out our new research report, which can be found in the description down below or at CSSI.space. If you'd like more educational videos on rocket propulsion, on nozzle geometry, on specific impulse, please head over to our channel. Uh, we have tons there uh, for you to learn. Again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you later. Goodbye.